hello guys and welcome back to my channel now for today's video it is going to be it is going to be my reaction to the pre-match press conference i would say i'm super excited but not really super excited because you know it is leicester and i'm not feeling that confident about this game so this is going to be my reaction to the press conference and always I'll listen to each question and then if i feel like i need to say something um I'll pause it and I'll go through it and then you can let me know what you think of the press conference in the comments below. But yeah, we're just going to get straight into it. So let's go. I realise we've been asked uh, quite a lot about this over the last couple of weeks, but in the last 24 hours, in the last hour, a new interview with Harry Kane has been released. Um, given what we've heard from that interview, can you offer any reassurance? Or do you believe that the Leicester game will be Harry's final game in a Tottenham shirt? No, in terms of the interview, um, I know something's been been published, but I've not I've not listened to it. I've not watched it. I've not I've not heard anything um, because I've been out on a training pitch. I've been preparing for for a game at the weekend, so um, it's a game that's important for us. Um, we need to win. We're going to go there to win, and um, Harry's going to be part of that as well. So they're the only the only comments I have on it, to be honest. Just reflecting on, on your own career as well for a moment, obviously you uh, your, your playing career ended early and perhaps you didn't achieve what you wanted to achieve as a player. Can you therefore understand a fellow player when he says that he doesn't want to end his career with any regrets at all? No, of course. Uh, no player wants to end their career with, regret, with regrets. I don't think any human being likes having regrets either. So... It's normal. It's normal. I think if you speak to any player in the world, uh, they'll probably say the same. So, like I said before, my my attention, and I know every player's attention, is on the weekend. Um, and then the summer is the summer. Next season's next season. Um, but at the moment, the only conversations that I've had or that we'll be having will be about the game at the weekend with not only Harry, but also every every other player in the squad as well. If he manages to score maybe uh, one or two over the weekend, it might add a, a few more million, perhaps, onto, onto a price tag. You mentioned in this interview about £100 million, pounds, and that might be his peak value, he says, that perhaps that won't get any higher over the next couple of years. But from your point of view and from what you've seen of Harry, do you think that his stock can rise still further? I think, first of all, um, I hope Harry scores a couple at the weekend because... I think his performances this season have warranted the golden boot. I think he's the best player in the Premier League. Um, he's got the most assists. And hopefully from a from an individual point of view, he gets a golden boot as well. Um, and in doing that, he helps Tottenham Hotspur get three points at the weekend. Um, that's the most important thing. I can't, I can't speak on transfer value and people's stock and all that because... In football, things change so quickly. So at the moment, Harry's a Tottenham player um, and he's going to be involved at the weekend. And and like I said, hopefully he can win the Golden Boot. Okay, Barry, can we move? They're so determined to get him to like, say something, but he's not going to. He's he's mastered deflecting the, the questions and like asking about his stock value. Like, how's he meant to know what his stock value is? Like, yeah. <laughs> but that question did make me laugh, which is something. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's carry on. Please, thank you. Sure, no problem. Um, looking ahead then to the weekend, have you uh, have you seen any extra motivation? I mean, with with the, the background of Harry's situation, but also your situation as well. It's the last game uh, that you'll be in charge of. Is there? Have you noticed any extra motivation after the Villa game? No, no extra motivation. Um, Wednesday night was disappointing. Um, it was it was massively disappointing for us to lose, um, and then also the manner in which we lost as well. I think it it, it makes it, it makes it very difficult to take. Um, we have to bounce back. We've we've been in, we've been in positions where you have to have to try and get over results as quickly as possible. And in football, the good thing is we've got a game in two days, um, which is is still fresh in our minds. The other night, so we want to win for for our own our own sake as well. And, and then also when you're representing Tottenham Hotspur, you want to win. We know it's a big game. They've got something riding on it. We have as well. So we know the importance of the game. So in terms of extra motivation, no. The motivation is to win a game of football and that that is always the case. 
How will you look back on your time in charge? I mean, it's it's been a, a mixture of results, but then also you've had lots of people questions from us lot, Super League, Harry Kane, all this stuff. You know, if you go into an interview to be a head coach somewhere else, you can probably tick off how to handle the media. You've had some difficult situations to deal with, but how will you look back on your on your time in charge on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well? Um, I think that that question I'll probably answer, answer in the summer or a bit further down the line when I do actually reflect, um, because at the moment my mind hasn't really thought of that. Um, all the stuff you spoke about, it comes with being in this role. I, I respect you guys have got a job to do. Um, I understand it. I've been involved in the media as well, so I know what it's like. Um, it's not a problem. It's normal. It's normal. The most in, important thing when you're in this role is that you take care of business on the football pitch. Um, we've had a we've had a short time to to try and change some stuff quite a lot. Um, we feel like we have, but unfortunately, in, in in key moments in a couple of the games, have gone against us. And ultimately, you're you're judged on results. And Wednesday night was was very disappointing. Not for me because I, I don't have an ego. I, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it for. And it was a disappointing evening for 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 everyone associated with the club and. Um, the most important thing now is we try and bounce back at the weekend. Um, in terms of me and and my my career and and, and stuff, yes, there's stuff I've learned, of course. I, I'd be crazy and, and silly not to take some things, but in terms of reflection, I think it's something not not to think about right now. And for the weekend game, obviously there's there's still stuff on the line for, for Tottenham Hotspur, European qualification. Obviously, you would prefer to perhaps qualify for the Europa League, but would it be satisfactory if, if Tottenham were to qualify for the Conference League? I think we want to win. Uh, we want to win, and then we'll see where we end up. Um, the first priority is to win. Unfortunately, the other night damaged us a little bit in terms of it's not in our control now, certain things. So um, we're disappointed with that. But now we have to bounce back and firstly take care of the weekend. And the weekend's result, and like I say, if we win, then we'll see where we end up next season. And just a final one from me um, on something slightly different. We've seen the uh, Met Police investigation into online hate. They've made a couple of arrests, and obviously we can't talk about the specifics of the case. But obviously, Tottenham players have been the target of online hate this season. Do you welcome authorities taking steps to try and stop this? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think it's just been Tottenham players either. I think it's a lot of people, um, not just footballers, people in society as well. So I'm happy that something's been been taken into consideration. There's some accountability for, for certain actions and hopefully going forward, these things can, um, they can get a lot stricter. Thank you, David. Ian Abrahams. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like, because I saw it on like, the Spurs Twitter, um, I'm glad that there's more action being taken against people that um, abuse people online. So that's a positive to come out of like the season, even though it should it should have happened like a long time ago, because this abuse thing on the internet has been happening for like years. But it's good that it's finally getting sorted. And yeah, there's not really much else to say on that. All right, how you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks. Last game as manager of Spurs, um, would you claim it was a success? Sorry, Ian, can you repeat that? Your, your, last game, your last game as manager of Spurs coming up, would you claim your period in time has been a success? Um, listen, we've still got another game at the weekend to, to judge that. Um, I really believe we've, we've made some, some changes that uh, will, will help us go forward. I, I really believe that. In terms of a success, we'll see. We'll see what the weekend brings up. Um, I think the most important people to answer that question are probably the board, the the fans, the feeling, the players. Of course, so I have my opinions on on what we've done as a coaching team, as coaching staff, and I believe we've we've changed some stuff and helped the group as well. So. Like I go back to the most important thing in, in this role or, or when you're, you're, you're coaching a team is the results. Um, and the other night was, was a dent. It was, it was tough to take. It was disappointing. But we need to bounce back and, and get a good feeling at the weekend um, come Sunday evening. 
There's a lot of negativity uh, around a lot of football clubs right now, including Tottenham, who were top at one stage and, and may now only finish as high as, as seventh. Do you, do you understand the fans' view on that? I mean, I, I asked Michael Arteta if Arsenal's season had been an acceptable one finishing seventh. He said no. So it'd be interesting what your opinion is on Spurs on that front. Yeah, I agree. Uh, frustrating, obviously disappointing. We don't want to be where we are now. Um, I've no shame in saying that. Absolutely, we, we as a club, we want to, we want to aim for better things. Um, I know the chairman has mentioned some things in in recent days about the direction we want to go as a football club come next season. So we'll get the weekend out of the way and hopefully win that game of football and. Like I say, we'll see where we finish up, but of course we don't want to be where we are. Um, that's there, there's absolutely no problem with saying that. I understand the frustration with our fans, um, but it's important the fans know that our players are feeling that too. We know that we don't want to be where we are, so of course it's it's been a it's been a disappointing campaign in in the way that it's, it's panned out in the end. And last one from me in terms of Spurs' future not being in this position in twelve months' time. How much of a rebuilding of, of, of the team does there have to be? There are all those years under Pochettino where it was basically the same squad after year after year. didn't change actually that much, to be fair, under Mourinho. How much does it need to be changed a lot this summer, regardless of what happened with Harry? Uh, I think things will happen in the summer because there's a managerial um, place that needs to be taken. Um, so firstly, I'm sure that will happen. And then, like I say, to echo the, the chairman's words um, about getting back to the DNA of this football club, and it's important you build something. Um, all successful clubs recently, and as years gone by, have, have had time to build something. They've wanted to go in a certain direction and work, work a certain way. And, yeah, I, I agree with the chairman. I, 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 think, um, I think we do need to build something, definitely, and hopefully we will. These things can take time sometimes sometimes they can they can be quick um you look at i mean a team like liverpool for example i think they've finished eighth twice in the last decade but under under jürgen klopp that time they built something they won the league and the feeling is different so this football club we have we have foundations there to build something and um hopefully that that can happen okay thank you moose um regarding that i mean i can't i agree with like liverpool they've um they were uh, pretty, like they were like behind us in terms of like team and everything. So they were able to like rebuild and like bring players in like Van Dijk and then Allison as well that they like, took them to the next level. The only problem with Tottenham is that most of our best players will want to leave this season and maybe like next season. So I don't think we have time to like rebuild with them involved, which is kind of a problem. And we're trusting Daniel Levy to re rebuild this team when we needed a rebuild like a few years ago. Like, I don't see it happening. But what Ryan Mason saying is correct in the terms of there is players here to like a, be part of like a rebuild, but then most of them will probably want to leave. So it's pointless. Um, so next season, who knows, we could be in a similar position because we know what Daniel Levy's like and he's not going to spend a lot of money unless he has a personality transplant, which is not going to happen. But let's just carry on. Move on to Olivia from PLP. Hi, Ryan. Hello. Um, you know, that, that performance midweek, what, what do you, can you put your finger on what those inconsistencies are down to? Um... No, I can't really. I mean, these moments in games where I think if we break down the game the other day, the first 20 minutes, I think we had the best part of 70% possession. They didn't have a shot on our target. Um, we was in control of the match. We was 1-0 up. And then a moment, an unfortunate moment with the own goal, it changes the momentum. The, the feeling is different. And I think we're trying to work in a way now that it's probably different to what we've been working for the under the previous management. So these things take time to to stay disciplined at um, and not lose our shape or not lose our structure and things like that. So these moments in football, they're, they're crucial. Uh, I spoke about the Leeds moment, the offside, and these moments, they change the whole 
uh, dynamic of a game of football. And I believe the other night we lost our way for 20 minutes after the own goal, after that situation. And then we we give them another goal on the stroke of half time as well. So to give two goals away in the Premier League, it's it becomes difficult to turn it around after that. Um, and, and a word on Leicester as well. Um, you know, they, they've been brilliant this season. They are where they are in the league for a reason. What sort of challenge do they pose you this weekend? Yeah, it's going to be a big challenge. Um, they've won the FA Cup, so I'm sure they're on a bit of a high from that. And then obviously they had their midweek game as well, which um, I'm sure was disappointing for them. So there's a lot riding on this game. We know that. We respect them. Um, they work in a, a very good way. They've got a really good manager. Um, and like you say, they've had a good season as well. So, yeah, it's a difficult match, definitely. Um, I think it would be a difficult match for both teams. So it's important we go there with the belief to, to come out on top. And just finally, I know you said you don't want to talk about, you know, your role as manager until after Sunday. But if you could just tell us how much you've enjoyed, you know, stepping up and, and taking on this role as, as the club that, you know, you love and you support and you pay for. Yeah, I, I have immense pride. I mean, um, to be given this opportunity to represent the club in in the role that I'm in at the moment is is very flattering. It's one of the one of the best jobs in Europe. Um, and to be given that responsibility is a big deal. So I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I wish we could have had some more positive results. Obviously, we've had a few at home. Um, we've put ourselves in a position now where we have to go into the weekend and win a game of football. So... Once that game's out of the way and hopefully we get three points, then, then maybe I'll be able to sit sit down and, and speak to some family members and, and really enjoy the experience. But at the moment, yeah, it's um, it's been crazy, but also it's been something that I've, I've fully enjoyed as well. OK, thanks, Olivia. We'll go to George Cummins. Thanks, Simon. Hello, Ryan. Ryan, um, sorry, in this latest interview, Harry Kane's gone. He said he wants to play with Kevin De Bruyne. So is he making, is this where his future is going to be, Man City? Oh, like I said, I wasn't aware of that because not, I've not heard it, but I'd love to play with Kevin De Bruyne as well. Um, I think I think every footballer in the world, every footballer in the Premier League is, um, is an exceptional player. And from what I know, I've spoke to him a few times, he's an exceptional person as well. So I think if you ask any footballer in world football right now, uh, would you like to play with Kevin De Bruyne? I think they'd say yes. Okay. We just got to be looking at deflecting questions. That was a good way to answer that question because they keep picking these hurricane questions and I'm just like, can we just leave that alone? Like, just let us Spurs fans enjoy this, well, try and enjoy this last one last game without having to think about hurricane leaving. Because I don't want to think about hurricane leaving until like at the end of the season and then I'll be like, I can And then if I see that happens, I'll be like, okay, I can accept it. But until the season's over, I don't want to think about it. So, hearing these, keep hearing these hurricane questions, they keep coming up. It is annoying to hear, um, so boring now. But, yeah, as I said, he is so good at deflecting questions. I mean, I would like to play with Cameron De Bruyne as well. So, doesn't mean I'm going to become a Man City fan, does it? You know what's going to happen with Gareth Bale? Will it be any chance of him coming back to Tottenham next season? I'm not sure. I've not had those conversations. Um, we will probably, or, or the club, will have those conversations at the end of the season. But after after this game at the weekend, then he goes back to his parent club. He's, he's a Real Madrid player. So these conversations, these these um, situations, I'm not sure of. I just know that hopefully he's um, he's going to help us at the weekend. Thanks, George. Ellie Gold. Hey there, Ryan. Um, just first off, I wanted to ask you about injury news. Obviously, Jaffet went off, went off with what looked like a serious injury at the, on Wednesday. Yeah, so Jaff and Ben are the only two at the moment. Uh, Jaff sustained a uh, yeah, naughty ankle injury, I think, to his ligament. So he won't feature at the weekend and hopefully it isn't too too long for him out. But um, Ben Ben resumed some light, light training today. So they're the only two at the moment that aren't available for selection. Um, can I just ask you, obviously, finances are tough for a lot of clubs in football right now. You know, they've lost all the revenues of the last year with the, the match day income and everything. How difficult do you think it's going to be for the next manager, whoever that may be at Tottenham, to stamp their own mark on this football club, maybe bring in new players without selling any in the first place? 
I'm not too sure, um, to be honest. I, I can't really answer that question because I don't know the situation with finances. I don't know who's going to come in. I don't know who's going to go out. I think the most important thing probably is who's the manager because then they will have the conversations of the direction in terms of recruitment or, or what players they're happy with. And these types of conversations, I'm sure, will happen in the summer. Um, and like I said, I go back to the chairman's, chairman's comments. He, he said he wants to get back to to the DNA of this football club and hopefully that will happen. Um, I know the chairman cares about that. So hopefully we can we can build something and um, be successful. Can I just ask, you mentioned earlier that you've learned stuff during this period as interim head coach. What have you learned? Uh, lots. I'm learning every day. Um, I learn so much stuff, even when I'm in my kids in the garden, I, I'm learning stuff about how to act with them. So it's normal as people that, that we keep learning. Um, there's so much I've learned, of course. I, I'd be very, very silly if I didn't take some things from this experience. Um, a lot's happened in this five weeks, like a, a hell of a lot, um, to be honest. Um, and I feel like it's something that maybe once the season's over, I'll, I'll sit and I'll reflect and, OK, could I have done this better or, or could I have done that better? But in the moment, um, I feel like I've handled it with with instinct. Um, and I think that's that's the the key thing to take from it. You, you've got to go with what you feel and, and what you believe in within those moments. Thanks so regarding that. Um, I do think that um, Ryan Mason has always handled himself brilliant in front of like, the media and he's always been like really, really professional, which I didn't expect anything less. But it has been interesting to see him in this role. And obviously, I will have like my final opinion on Ryan Mason after the end of the season, after we've played Leicester. And we've seen how it has ended and where we ended it up. But for now, I feel like he's handed himself really well in front of the media. And yeah, I've been... Obviously, I wasn't too happy when we only got sat six days before the cup final. But I do feel like Ryan Mason has come in and he's been brilliant with the like players from like what we're hearing and like how he's been with them and stuff and like training and then like everything that's happened so it has been i'd say he's, he's done a decent job so far and it, i think it like it all and um all ends until it all depends on how we end up at the end of the season thank you patrick hi ryan uh, your predecessor, Jose Mourinho, was quite critical last season of Tanga and Dombele's fitness and, and his attitude. Um, obviously, you haven't been starting Tanga in, in, in most games. I think he only started in your first game. Um, he is the club record signing. I think we all kind of know he's a he's a very talented player. Um, have you had a problem at all with, with his fitness or attitude? And, and, and if not, can you talk us through kind of why you haven't been been starting him? Um, no, um, I'm, I'm not gonna. I don't, I don't think that there's there's another ten or eleven players that haven't been starting in some games as well. So, I don't think it's right to single out one player and explain my reasoning behind it. Um, the the players, the group have have worked hard. They've really worked hard, and I, I think going forward as well, they want to work hard. They want to to train in a way that that prepares them to play in the Premier League um, at maximal capacity. So. That's the most important thing, I think. Yeah, these five weeks. I, I can't speak about what's happened before um, because I wasn't involved. I do know that the last five weeks, the players, players have been professional. Um, they've wanted to work and they've enjoyed working as well. And I'm sure I can speak speak on the behalf of any footballer. You you want that? You want that to be in place? Okay. Thanks, Dan. Finish with Jonathan Veal. Hi, Ryan. Um, it's obviously a big summer for Gareth Bale uh, with Wales and the Euros and everything. I think a few fans have thought perhaps that he's got one eye on that and he's not been fully committed to the team. Have you seen that all at all? And um, in your mind, is he in contention to start on Sunday? No, I completely disagree with that. Um, personally, Gareth's, listen, I, I can only speak of my experience in these last five weeks with Gareth. Um, he scored four goals for, for this football club in that time. It's been excellent. Um, last weekend, I think, was the most minutes he's played in the Premier League all season, pushing 90, close to 90 minutes. I think if you were to look at Gareth in that moment, he looked fit, he looked strong. 
Um, he was brave. He, he added a different dimension for us and he has severe quality as well. But that spike in terms of the minutes played, he, he felt his quad. Um, in terms of him thinking about the summer, I don't believe so because he was out there the other night. He was playing through some pain, playing through a problem he had for me, for himself and for the football club. So in terms of Gareth's commitment, um, Gareth's quality, I think his commitment's been fully there um, in this moment that I've been here. And in terms of his qualities, quality is never going to leave him. I think you see that. You see that every time he's on the football pitch. Cool. Uh, and after Sunday's game, are you planning on having a debrief with, with the chairman? And um, will you feed back to him what you perhaps think the squad needs in the summer and which players might want to, you might think should leave? No, no. My plan is uh, is the weekend, and then our season's done. I'm here. I'm here for anyone if anyone wants to speak. But there's nothing, nothing planned, nothing in place at the moment. So, my main focus on our focus as a football club is the game at the weekend at this moment in time. So, um, let's talk about Gareth Bale. And I am. Um, I don't. I feel like people have taken his comments when he was on um, national duty. A, a bit of context, because he was just explaining what the loan deal was. I feel like people just mis mistook that as, oh, I'm just getting fit for the Euros, that's what I care about, blah, blah, blah. But then he sort of explained himself, so then I feel like people kind of played off about that. But then all of a sudden, I feel like people are bringing it, like, bringing it up again. I don't know, to be honest. Um, do I hope Gareth Bell comes back next season? Obviously, I would... Of course, like, who wouldn't? Um... I have seen some rumours today that he's planning on going back to Real Madrid and then he's going to retire in 2022. I don't know. There's just rumours at the moment whether it happens or not. I don't know. But I would want to him to come back next season, have a full stadium full of fans. Um, in terms of his commitment and stuff, I, I feel like I've seen he's been 100% committed. Every time he's played, he's been 100% committed. Obviously, there were some games where he wasn't good and like he got dropped and stuff but that was on like under Mourinho but under Ryan Mason I feel like he's been he's been one of the best players so I don't really get this sort of he has no commitment and all he's got is focus on the Euros I don't agree with that and then regarding that last question I don't know why they would ask that because Sidgwick and Ryan Mason are just interim I I don't know if he has any like why he would go to chairman and say oh you should sell this player you should sell this player I don't think that was be a kind of conversation to have, but anyways, yes, yeah, so that is the my reaction to the pre match press conference. There will be a post match press conference reaction after the game, so look out for that. Um, as always, if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow. My live watch along for the Leicester game, and to be honest, I ain't looking forward to it, but I will see you guys then. Bye.